Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about Quixel Mixer. Now the astute among you might be thinking, hey wait a minute, didn't we just talk about this? Did you not just do a video about this? And you are 100% and absolutely correct. Just last month I did a video on Quixel Mixer that kind of walked you through how you can use this tool to create PBR textures quickly and easily. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this because I already have that hands-on video that will walk you through using Quixel. So then why the heck am I talking about it again today? Well that is because Quixel Mixer 2019 has just shipped and um it's actually quite an improvement it, it, it kind of shows you where quixel mixer is going now if you're unaware of what quixel mixer is all about it is the bastard love child of mega scans and quixel suite the quixel suite is a set of um texturing tools for creating pbr based textures directly within photoshop and they seem to be moving away from photoshop and into the standalone application now it's very similar in functionality or in end result to the substance suite of programs that was recently recently purchased uh, with great fanfare by Adobe. Uh, but Algorithmic Substance Painter and Substance Designer, well this kind of comes in between those two. Now the workflows are not really that similar but the end result is the same. A game ready uh, PBR physically based rendering texture set for uh, basically being generated. So what you see here is Quixel Mixer in action. Now the very, very cool thing about Quixel, Quixel, uh, Quixel Mixer is it is free right now. It is in beta and will remain in beta for the remainder of 2019. During that time, you can use it completely free. Now I did hear from a little birdie that's $100 after, but I wouldn't quote me on that one. I also wouldn't be surprised to see it's actually bundled in with mega scan subscriptions as well. But this here is Quixel Mixer 2019. Now we are going to get into what makes 2019 so magical in a second, but I quickly want to just show you the workflow of Quixel Mixer. So you can see here, this is just like a Photoshop layer stack, and you can bring in various different layers that you blend together. So this is a mud texture from Megascans. You can bring in your own PBR textures, by the way, and the import process actually does a very good job of bringing in all of the different maps all at once instead of one by one. Um, well, you see here, what we've done is we've layered mud and gravel together to create a uh, muddy gravel, I guess you'd call it, or uh, gravelly mud. And then you can add like a noise layer on top of it to distort things a little bit. You saw that in action right there. Add a layer of moisture on top of that. And then we're going to add some puddles on top of the moisture layer. And boom, there you've just created muddy ground. You can export this out and use it in your game immediately. And that is essentially the workflow of Quixel Mixer. Now, what 2019 has done is added a bunch of procedural layers. So we're going to go ahead and open up one of their examples, this um, stylized floor. Uh, nope, don't want to save anything. And what this is, is pretty much 100% procedurally generated. So what we're doing here is using a bunch of masks to build our layer. So let's just look at this really quickly. And we'll turn everything off. So we got our first layer here. It's just a solid. It's an Elbido um, solid color. Uh, we'll go in here and add a layer of bricks on. Now this is where we start seeing the new functionality in 2019.1. These procedural masks. So I'm going to go ahead and select the bricks. and You're going to see how it's created. So this is created using a pattern mask, and we've got a bunch of different options. We can switch these out to circular bricks if we so wished. And this is the new functionality. And we've got a bunch of different options in there. So we can switch that. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So let's go back to our pattern here. And you, can, you basically, through each different layer of these masks, you can create these procedural textures as a result. Add a layer of grout over top, which once again is a curvature-based uh, mask and a blend blending from below so you're blending in these layers and now we've created the grout so we can turn that back off you'll see the difference so this is the grout in between add a solid on top and then we'll add some highlights to it and this highlight once again is a noise mask and a normal mask and a position gradient and then the end result is you've got these bricks now they're not the greatest looking thing you've ever seen you could probably generate much better yourself but it does give you an idea of the new functionality in quixel 19.1 these procedural masks and it also shows you that more and more of Quixel Suite's functionality is going to be brought over to Quixel Mixer. I am almost 100% certain that Quixel Mixer is the future of um, Quixel. I, I don't think Suite will be around much longer. Now, another hint is the fact that it's completely mixing from up here. Uh, you can find it elsewhere. I think if you go to the very bottom, there's a link to it, but it's just not that um, emphasized anymore. So Quixel Mixer is definitely the future. And as I mentioned earlier on, you can download it for Windows or Mac um, completely free, at least until the end of this year. Um, the download itself is about half a gigabyte in size. Um, it runs pretty well. It doesn't require that much of a machine to run. And like I said, I've already done a video that will actually show you the process of creating the maps minus the new procedural stuff. 
So let's get into that. So this is Mixer 2019. This was just released on Friday. Um, and this is the version you will get when you download. First off, before I get into this, I just want a new pet peeve. Why is everything the democratization of content? It's, I know Unity started this, but I really hate that expression. So anyways, here we are. The newest thing here is this new mask stack. Uh, it unlocks a whole new level of creativity through a total synergy between scans and procedurals completely controllable with custom sculpting and hand painting. Uh, this potent combination gives you the best of all worlds, enabling a slew of material authoring workflows like procedural material creation, uh, stylized texture, scan-based PBR materials from photos, terrain creation, and much more. So the new mask stack, you can procedurally author, modify, and define your materials completely non-destructively, responsively, and instantly with zero loading time and rendering, zero loading and rendering time, you get instant feedback. So you can here you see what kind of what we just saw to make those bricks. So we've got a bunch of new procedural masks that's brought in. There's two kinds of mask stacks, components and modifier. A component generates displacements, so modify, alter, and modify it. So a normal mask component, you see here you can modify the normals um, of the underlying layers. So you can say use underlying normals and you can just kind of quickly change them up, reposition how uh, things will be, how the normal map will ultimately affect things. Uh, we got a noise mask component. Now this is huge. Noise is really important for just about everything. You use it for anything from creating dirt and grime to the textures you're seeing here could be used for leather or alligator skin or whatever and it's also used for creating um, terrain quite commonly so you've got different masks such as whirly and perlin and here you can see the the end results of them so this is a great starting point for procedural masks um, and then we got a curvature mask this actually takes the underlying layers and height and you can use it to accentuate the edges cavities or even generate ambient occlusion uh, so it's good things for like they said edge wear and grime accumulation so if you want to add dirt to things based off of its height or displacement or edge that is one way to do it uh, we've got the pattern mask this is what we saw earlier on to create all the bricks you can use different shapes such as circles squares um, so on you can offset them uh, you can randomize them you can jitter them uh, and this can be really useful useful for doing things like creating ceiling tiles or bricks, as we saw, or um, manhole covers, the little circles on manhole covers and so on, um, subway penny tile, you name it. This is perfect for creating that kind of a texture almost immediately or creating that kind of material almost immediately or creating that kind of material and giving it a height map at the same time. Very cool stuff there. Uh, additional mask components include image mask, load custom image mask into the stack to have finer control over the masking, uh, position gradient, create a Mask gradient based on the vertical, horizontal, and height of the mix. This is a quick way to highlight or add effects to parts of a mix based on position. Uh, solid component. Pretty straightforward. Uh, blur modifier. Here you can see it in action. Blur. No blur. Some blur. So you can see what it's doing on the edges uh, right there. Again, it's useful for... Um, well, softening edges, obviously. Uh, we got a bevel modifier, similar concept. You're basically beveling down the edges. So there is beveled, there is unbeveled. Again, uh, useful for train. Um, we got gradient remap modifier. Gradient remap raises or lowers values in the mask to limits that you control. This operation can be repeated in itself. Combining the gradient remap with other layers helps create smooth repetition of complex patterns and shapes. Like so, once again, really good for creating uh, repeatable tiled patterns, such as, again, uh, floors, uh, walls, that kind of stuff. And the circular transform modifier, I have absolutely no idea what you would use this for other than, uh, I don't know. Actually, I can't think of a use for this one, but I'm sure somebody can come up with some cool stuff for this. It allows you to make circular patterns out of an existing layer, loop, repeat, swirl, are super fun to experiment with. Unfortunately, they don't give a use case, uh, but you can see the results there. Blending of mass stack layers. Um, mixing of mass stack layers can be done in many ways. You can change opacity clip any layer to any other layer. Change the blend mode normal, add multiply and overlay with more on the way. Uh, new samples, mixes, and mass stack presets. And you can see here, and this one is actually pretty important because this is all about what the future is. Is The like introduction of mass stacks opens up a huge and vast platform for us to expand upon. The first step towards adding smart materials to the mixer and bringing over highly requested and familiar features from Quixel Suite. Like I said, this does seem to be the future of Quixel Suite. Mixer seems to be where they are putting their resources. Uh, we will be expanding this in the coming months and would love to hear your feedback and input on how you think it can be improved. And I gotta say, I, I am impressed with how much amazing results you can actually get from Quixel Mixer. And I can see this set of masks really opening up the options. Now it's still, it's not even close to the functionality of Substance Painter and Substance Designer, but it is probably capable of very similar results in a different style of workflow. 
But as they add more and more features and functionality to it, Quixel Mixer could become a player in this space for sure, especially if the price stays at that $100-ish dollar mark or free. Free is awesome. Um, but if it stays uh, quite affordable, you got to keep in mind that it's still 600 or so for the substance suite. So it is definitely a value there. Now, what I can say is if you haven't checked out Quixel Mixer yet, do so. The fact that it is completely free for Mac and Windows, at least for the rest of this year, it's a very powerful tool even without mega scans. And when you add in mega scans, it's it's even more powerful, obviously. But you can, again, bring in your own textures, your own workflow, and this new mask functionality really kind of ups what it is capable of. And I'm interested to see where Quixel goes from here, how fast it evolves, how much new functionality we get, because this stuff is, is going to be very powerful and open up a lot of doors for what people can do with uh, Quixel. And Quixel is already capable, or Mixer, I guess I should say, is already capable of a pretty astonishing results. So this just kind of makes it even better. All right, that's where I leave it. Did you guys check out Quixel when I posted about it before? Or have you used it already? There's any of this new functionality kind of make you more likely to jump in and check it out? Let me know. Comments down below. Also, next week is GDC. So uh, probably expect a fair amount of activity on this channel. And then the week after is my vacation. So expect less activity then. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.